In this lecture, I would like to address the concept of domestic violence. Now, this is an incredibly complicated subject. And um, as I said, this is just an introduction to the whole uh, issue of abuse. So domestic violence is hugely complicated. This is just an introduction. It's to help equip you to be better able to care for the, those that you're involved with, uh, to be slightly more informed. Um, there's no way that having followed this lecture, you'll have a thorough understanding of domestic abuse. So from the, right from the start, I want to encourage you to look into what's available in your location, where you live, uh, what the laws are, uh, what uh, help is available to you, where you are in different country laws and uh, issues, and, not issues, the laws and um, uh, ways of help are different in different countries different states even within countries. So please investigate that where you are. So what, what I'm saying to you, this uh, just to give a very basic understanding, please take this, look into it, where it is that you're, where you're living. So what is abuse? Now we've been looking at this quite a bit. This, this lesson today is largely based on uh, Chris Molsey's work. Uh, so what is domestic abuse? So domestic violence, which is also referred to as intimate partner violence, dating abuse or relation, relationship abuse, is a pattern of behaviours used by one partner to maintain power and control over another partner in an intimate relationship. So again, we're looking again, the whole aspect of abuse is linked to power and control. This person who uh, is the abuser want, is so selfish, they want power and control over other people. And they are, they're basically worshipping themselves and they want the, the abusers, abused, the victims, to live for them to do exactly what they say. So domestic violence does not discriminate. Uh, the, uh, people of any race, age, gender, sexuality, religion, education level or economic status can be a victim or a perpetrator of domestic violence. If you look at someone, you do not, you cannot tell whether or not that person is an abuser. It doesn't matter how they dress, their economic status, their uh, educational level, uh, their country of origin. Th these things are not indicators. Why? Because it comes from the human heart and the human heart is the same all over. Um, so abuse defined it includes behaviours that physically harm, intimidate, manipulate or control a partner or otherwise force them to behave in ways they don't want to. Uh, this can happen through physical violence, threats, emotional abuse, or financial control. Now we've looked uh, quite a bit at emotional abuse and what that looks like. So here, here's important, recognize the warning signs of abuse. So the start of a new relationship, it's not always easy to tell if it will later become abusive. I. I I know sometimes when someone comes out of an abusive relationship or, or they've just they've come to an understanding that it's abusive, there'll be there'll be blame put on them, like, didn't you see what he was like? Or didn't you see what she was like? Couldn't you tell? Well that's putting it on them. It's putting it on the victim that it's their fault that they were abused. Because people who are abusive are not always mean. They can be the nicest, most charming people. So many abusive people appear like ideal partners in the early stages of a relationship. I believe it's uh, Lundy Bancroft in his book, Why Does He Do That Inside the Minds of Angry, uh, Inside the Minds of Abusive Men, uh, said that when it comes to male abusers, they grow up thinking they're going to meet this image they have of their future partner, their spouse that's going to make them happy. So they're thrilled when they meet this woman and, and abusive people can be really nice so they might sweep them off their feet abusive people can be charming and caring and kind um, they're not from the get go horrible otherwise we we would not be taken in um, so it's not easy to tell you if someone starts out in a relationship an abusive person can seem to be ideal so the warning signs of abuse don't always appear overnight and may emerge and intensify as the relationship grows and these emerge uh, on the level of control that the abuser has over other people. I knew an abusive woman who would have people work for her and she would gain their trust by caring for them in especially vulnerable moments in their lives. 
and be extremely caring and kind and declare her faithful friendship. And then when that person believed it, that was like a key moment when the nastiness would start appearing. Um, of course, as Christians, you want to believe that someone's kind and caring and is going to be a faithful friend. So the warning of signs of abuse don't appear overnight and may emerge and intensify as the relationship grows. And usually that's to do with the level of control that they've gained over someone. So every relationship is different and domestic violence doesn't always look the same. So it's often been said when you've uh, helped one situation of domestic violence, you've helped one domestic situation of dom domestic violence. We're talking here about common patterns that come through, but everyone's different. Everyone's situation is different. Each individual is different. So while we can recognize the patterns coming through and it's really helpful to inform us, please never go in with the assumption that you know what's going on and you, and you know. Because that's, that's a prideful attitude um, of I know and I'm coming here to help. Got to be humble and dependent on the Lord and asking for his help and leading as we love and care for the people involved, that he would give us the discernment and the insight. One feature shared by most abusive relationships is that the abusive partner tries to establish or gain power and control through many different methods at different moments. And we've been discussing this throughout the course. Common signs of abusive behaviour in a partner include telling you that you never do anything right, showing extreme jealousy of your friends or time spent away from them, Preventing or discouraging you from spending time with others, particularly friends, family members or peers. Insulting, demeaning or shaming you, especially in front of other people. Preventing you from making your own decisions, including about working or attending school or college. Controlling finances in the household without discussion, such as taking your money or refusing to provide money for necessary expenses. This is something to be very careful with. Um, there's some... Uh, areas, some people within the evangelical world, for example, who believe that only men should do the finances. Um, and it, that, that's because it's an authority issue. He's leading, he's being, a, he's being taking up his male position uh, as a man by caring for the finances. But this is where you've got to be careful because if this, the, if we've shown in other lectures, Financial control is a very common aspect of abuse. So you, we need to be careful when we're advising people about who does what with the finances. Because if the abuser is male and he's the only one with the uh, access to finances and in our well-intentioned uh, ignorance, by that I mean we're unaware of what's going on, we could be compounding the abuse because we could be saying God wants you to be doing the finances. We've got to be very careful with these things. Um, uh, who's gifted? Who, uh, and, and looking after these aspects of family life. Um, we've got to be very wise and understand what's going on in the family, who's involved. Uh, not, not To be very careful, blanket, black and white statements. Uh, pressuring the person to have sex or perform sexual acts they're not comfortable with. This is very, very common. Dare I say it, 1 Corinthians 7 is one of the most abused Bible passages I know, where they, usually as men, demand sex and how they want it from the partner, saying that their body belongs to them and they can't refuse them, um, saying that they have to be able to have sex whenever they want it and however they want it. And if the partner doesn't do that, they use 1 Corinthians 7 to claim they're being disobedient to God. So it's extremely important that we... We understand people and, and correctly understand the Bible, gracious in our use of the Bible, um, and if you're helping a victim to understand what's going on. I, I mean, dare I say this, a lot of people, couples go for help, and this might be one of the issues going on, and the man will complain he's not being met, his, phys his sexual needs are not being met. And he, I've known situations where the man has had sexual relations frequently, Every day. And yet, what was heard by the counsellors was, he's not getting his needs met, so the pressure's put on the victim to have more. And if she did that, he would not treat her in, in such a bad way. So again, the victim's being blamed. So he believes that already. 
She believes it. The councillors are putting it on a victim again. And that's not the issue that's really involved. It's looking at the, the relationship as a whole, as, as the, 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 the partners, as individuals, as the spouses as individu- individuals, how they walk with the Lord, how they live their lives and help them in all aspects of their life. Pressurising people to use drugs or alcohol. Intimidating them through threatening looks or actions. Insulting their, par- their parenting or threatening to harm or take away the children or pets. Intimidating them with weapons, guns, knives, bats or mace. Destroying the belongings or, or your home. A lot of the time in abusive situations things might get thrown or broken. And a lot of the time the only things that get broken are the things that belong to the victim, not to the abuser. And when that's the case then you know it's not, uh, it's not that the abuser has lost control. Because there's a deliberate aspect there of their things are not broken. Domestic violence stems from a desire to gain and maintain power and control over an intimate partner. So abusive people believe they have the right to control and restrict their partner's lives, often either because they believe their own feelings and needs should be the priority in the relationship or because they enjoy exerting the power that such abuse gives them. So again, come back. The abusive person feels entitled. You are here for me. I have control over you. You have to do what I say. And, and it's not a loving relationship of relating to the partner for what's best for them. So why do people abuse? It's a learned behaviour. Uh, some people witness it in their own families when they grow up. Others learn it slowly from friends, public culture or structural iniquities throughout our society. But it comes down to what goes on inside of them, the selfishness of their own heart. I want what I want and you, you exist for me. No matter where they develop such behaviours, those who commit abusive acts make a choice in doing so. It's also possible not to be abusive. There are even This is a, 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 a Christian course. There are plenty of unbelievers, non-Christians, who stop being abusive. So it's possible to change, even if you're not a believer. Um, some people use genes as, as an excuse, or oh, is in my genes to be abusive. Well, lots of uh, abusive people change. It's possible to change. If you think about the work of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus did on the cross, it's possible. He died. He, he died and he rose again. For, um, uh, any, any believer is new in Christ. If an abusive person becomes or isn't a believer and the Holy Spirit dwells them, it's possible to change. Uh, they might not know how. They might not be willing to. So it's important they choose and they get the right help. So many people experience or witness abuse and use their experiences to end the cycle of violence and heal themselves without harming others. While outside factors such as drug and alcohol addiction can escalate the abuse, it's important to recognise that these issues do not cause domestic violence. The cause of domestic violence is what goes on inside the person who's, ab- who's abusive. It's their own heart. The, the heart in the Bible is the, the, the centre of the person the thoughts, the motives, the desires. Anyone can be abusive and anyone can be a victim of abuse. It happens regardless of age, gender, sexuality, race, economic status, ability, citizenship status or any other factor or identity. I already mentioned that earlier on. So feelings of confusion, fear or anger are normal responses to abuse. But they may also make you feel isolated or like no one will understand. We've mentioned that before as well. So being abusive is a decision. It's a strategic behaviour by your partner to create a desired power power dynamic. It's you exist for me and I don't I'm going to I'm going to behave this way towards you to get what I want. In that sense it's intentional. I'm motivated by myself and I'm going to treat you in unloving ways to to ensure that I have control in the relationship. So abuse in cultural context, abuse, domestic violence might look different to different people. It can affect anyone, but the ways in which it appears may manifest itself or be received differently depending on the setting in which it occurs. So cultural context can play a large role in a survivor's decision to leave an abusive relationship. The specific cultural setting may be determined by your race, gender, sexuality, class, education or any number of factors. 
So let's think about the um, cycle of abuse and power dynamics. Um, it used to be that people talked about the cycle of abuse, but that's not talked about anymore. It shouldn't be. So it began in the 1970s, and sometimes you still see it in courtrooms, therapist sessions, the media, the cycle of abuse. And this was a, a, a way that was used to try and understand abuse, uh, domestic violence, uh, to try and understand the dynamics that were going on at any time. So there'd be tension building, so the, there would be tension between the two, and then there would be an incident of domestic violence, and then they reconcile, and then they'd be calm. And that was used for a long time to try and understand domestic violence, but it's no longer acceptable anymore to use this. Because if it, abuse was a cycle, it would be predictable. You would know when, what to expect and when to expect it. And sometimes you can, but not always. And while there may be recognisable patterns go, going on in a relationship, the violence rarely occurs in a predictable cycle. And sometimes uh, the cycle of abuse is used to blame victims for the continuation of abuse. Well, you, you, you saw that the tension was building. Why didn't you just leave? Or why didn't you just get help? So again, the blame is put on the victim. So that was domestic violence. I hope you found that helpful. As I said, a very, very basic uh, course uh, le lesson on some basics of domestic violence. Please look into it further where you are, where you're located, what the local laws are, what you have available to you for help, what the laws are about reporting domestic violence, what the laws are about the church, uh, the involvement they could have. Uh, one thing I want to say is, a lot of books that you read on domestic violence encourage uh, victims to leave. If and Historically in Belgium, where I live, if the victim left and the police did not know where they would be, uh, they could lose their house. Um, so again, please be very, very careful what you instruct people to do. Please be informed about what the local laws are so that we are helping people and not unwittingly causing harm.